Hi and a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for your examination. And for students preparing for PFRDA, your exam is on 5th of November. I hope you all are preparing well for that. And for others, I hope that you have started your preparation specifically for SEBI and RBI grade B exam. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs. And I welcome you to another session of RBI 247, whereby today we are going to talk about the pension sector. So it is about the PFRDA, which has brought in forward certain amendments, certain changes in the equity allocation for the accounts under NPS. So let's talk about the amendment. So recently, the PFRDA, the regulator of the pension sector, and here one thing that you should know is the full form. So what is the full form of PFRDA? PFRDA stands for Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority. So this was set up in the year 2013 under the PFRDA Act. And recently, this regulator, PFRDA, has modified the equity allocation standards for tier 1 and tier 2 national pension system accounts. So, NPS ke andar do tariqe ke accounts hote hain, tier 1 and tier 2. So, uske andar jo equity allocation hai, the amount of investment to be done in the equity segment, usme ko changes lai gaye hain. And why has PFRDA brought in this changes? So, it has been authorized under the act. So, this is the act, the PFRDA Act of 2013 and Regulation 14 of PFRDA Regulations 2015 as amended from time to time. So, these regulations keep on amending from time to time. So, based on these two major acts and regulations, PFRDA has been authorized and has been exercising its powers under Section 14 of the PFRDA Act. Now, the amendments, if you look at it directly, then it will be very difficult for you to understand right now because you do not know the composition. What Tier 1 account, what are Tier 2 accounts, what is active mode, what is the auto mode. So, let us first understand these terms before jumping onto the, uh, the notes, the jumping onto the major new regulations brought in forward by PFRDA. So, let's start first and foremost with the uh, NPS. So, as you all know, national pension system. So, this was the scheme that was introduced specifically for people to save so that they can have certain amount of pension or money to, to, to look after themselves and in times of retirement. So, retirement ke liye ye pension scheme laya gaya tha. And this NPS, National Pension System or Scheme, comes under or is regulated by the PFRDA. So it is PFRDA, the regulator of the pension sector, that administers and regulates the NPS. Okay? And NPS is a rewarding scheme, which means that it is market linked. So whatever is the rate into the market, us rate pe aapko return milta hai. So you get a return and it is a defined contribution product. So you keep on contributing to that fund and at the end of the corpus, at the end of your investment cycle, you get back your amount. Then, then this amount is distributed in two parts. One part is given to you as a lump sum amount. 60% so of your entire corpus that you have generated during the period of investment in the NPS will be given to you as a lump sum. 60% aapko de diya jayega, jo baki, the remaining 40% will be converted into an equity, so into an NVT. So that will be converted into an NVT and that you will be getting as a regular equal monthly payments. NVT ka kya feature hai? You get equal payments. So monthly you'll be getting an equal payment. Okay? And contribution ki baat kare to minimum maximum contribution hai. For example, 500 per year ki aap contribution kar sakte ho. If you have a tier, if you're investing in tier 2 account, if you talk about a tier 1 account, then you can invest 1000. And this is for the voluntary purposes. Rest, all will discuss. Let's first see what else do we have. So under the NPS, a number called PRAN. Now, this is also important for you to remember. This is called Permanent Retirement Account Number. Like Permanent Account Number, hota hai, pran, that is Permanent Retirement Account Number is allotted 
इट्स अलॉटेड टू ऑल द सब्सक्राइबर्स ऑफ द एन सो जितने भी सब्सक्राइबर्स हैं उन सबको अलॉट किया जाता है अ यूनिक नंबर एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस नंबर ऑल द डेटा रिलेटेड टू द इन्वेस्टमेंट मेड अंडर दैट अकाउंट इज मेंटेन्ड बाय द सी आर ए ऑफ द पेंशन सेक्टर दैट इज द पी एफ आर डी ए फॉर इंडिविजुअल सब्सक्राइबर्स जितने भी सब्सक्राइबर्स हैं उनके लिए सेंट्रल रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग एजेंसी होती है पी एफ आर डी ए की जो सारे डेटा को रिकॉर्ड करके रखती है ठीक है इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ अकाउंट दट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट सो दे आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ अकाउंट टीयर वन अकाउंट विच इज कंपल्सरी एंड देर इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड विदड्रॉवल यू कैन नॉट विदड्रॉ ऑल योर अमाउंट हाव एवर द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ अकाउंट दैट इज टीयर टू अकाउंट यहां पर क्या है दैट इट इज अ वॉलेंट्री अकाउंट एंड यू कैन टेक आउट योर पेमेंट विदड्रॉवल कर सकते हो आप इस अकाउंट में एंड दिस अकाउंट इज मेनली मेड फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट पर्पज अगर हम टीयर वन अकाउंट की बात करें तो ये रिटायरमेंट पर्पज की पर्पज से होती है सो इफ यू थिंक दैट यू नीड टू you need to accumulate certain surpluses or certain funds to be used in future at at a time once you retire then people usually will have to go for a tier 1 account tier 1 account retirement purpose ke liye hota hai and it has restricted withdrawals you cannot withdraw all your amount right however we talk about tier 2 it is a voluntary account and you can open a tier 2 account only and only if you have an active tier 1 account agar for example mr x is a person he is of the age 50 years if he has opened a tier 1 account in nps so and if he wants to have another account so that he can make investment and earn returns extra returns then he can do so only if his tier 1 account is active and then only he can open up a tier 2 account for example there is a person mr y or rohan for example that person does not want to save anything for the future retirement purpose se li nahi dekh raha he just wants to make investment and he also wants to have the facility of withdrawing the money as and when he requires that is he wants to have a tier 2 account that is not possible ab bas tier 2 account nahi khol sakte if you have a tier 1 account then only you are eligible for a tier 2 account i hope this point is clear to you and this tier 2 account since it is for the purpose of making investments provide you with the facility of liquidity liquidity of the investments and withdrawals aap withdraw kar sakte ho apne investment ko theek hai and this i have already talked about once you have tier 1 account active account then only you are eligible to have a voluntary account an additional account known as tier 2 account what about the money so once you exit or once your retirement age comes then at that time a minimum of 40% as i have said so this is a minimum 40% आप ज्यादा करना चाहो वो भी आप कर सकते हो मिनिमम ऑफ फोर्टी परसेंट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू एनविटी और किसी इंश्योरेंस कंपनी से आपको मंथली पेंशन के फॉर्म में मिलता रहेगा द बैलेंस दैट इज सिक्सटी परसेंट मैक्सिमम विल बी गिवन टू यू एज अ लमसम अमाउंट दे आर अदर टैक्स बेनिफिट एस वेल ऑन एन पी एस आई होप यू ऑल नो दैट और वो थोड़ा सा टेक्निकल हो जाएगा बिकॉज इट इन्वॉल्व सर्टन सेक्शन अंडर विच यू गेट डिडक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल अंडर सेक्शन ए टी सी यू गेट this deduction up to rupees 150000 if you invest in nps apart from that you get an additional 50000 discount under section 80 ccd 1 theek hai to ye thoda sa income tax related ho jayega just you need to keep in mind that you get certain tax benefits if you have made investment into the nps account let's talk further and understand the models under nps to so nps ke andar kuch models hain first is the first is for the government employees specifically the central government and the state government excluding the armed forces to so, jitne bhi hamare armed forces hain the air the navy uh, and and the military unko hata ke jo uh, bache the government the government employees unke liye ek alag model hai then we have a model for the corporates and finally we have all citizens model all citizens model is a voluntary one 
जिसके अंदर एनी पर्सन इन टू दी एज ब्रैकेट ऑफ एटीन टू सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज कैन हैव और कैन ओपन एन एन पी एस अकाउंट तो एक एन पी एस अकाउंट खुलवा सकता है एंड दिस इज एप्लीकेबल टू ऑल द सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया दैट टू ऑन अ वॉलेंट्री बेसिस तो एटीन टू सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर्स नाउ यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग कि रिटायरमेंट एज टू सिक्सटी होती है नाउ एन पी एस ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स यू विथ the option of investing up to the age of 75 that is post re retirement also if you want to make investment into nps you can do so up to the age of 75 years of age i hope all citizens model aapko clear hai let's talk about government and the corporate model government model is compulsory for all the government employees specifically the central government to jitne bhi central government ke employees honge they are specifically required and mandatorily required to invest 10% at least 10% of their monthly salary into nps theek hai to monthly contribution karengi central government ki employees at the rate of 10% theek hai and a matching contribution will be done by the employer that is the central government or the state government agar aap 10% if suppose 10% is equal to 10000 agar aap har mahine 10000 rupaye nps mein dal rahe ho then the government will also be will also be giving a 10% that is 10000 investment into the nps in your account to aapke naam pe hi aapki account जो आपका एनपीएस अकाउंट होगा उसमें दस हजार गवर्नमेंट भी डालेगी सो सपोज दिस इज सपोज योर मंथली सैलरी टेन परसेंट उसका टेन थाउजेंड आता है राइट इफ यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग टेन परसेंट इन टू योर एनपीएस अकाउंट इसी एनपीएस अकाउंट में सो यू आर द इम्प्लॉय द एम्प्लॉयर विल ऑल्सो बी इन्वेस्टिंग टेन थाउजेंड टेन परसेंट बट नाउ दिस लिमिट हैज बिन इनहेंस एंड नाउ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू इन्वेस्ट फोर्टीन 14 परसेंट इन टू दी एन पी एस ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय तो जितनी भी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय है उसमें सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कितनी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन देगी सो द मंथली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल बी नाउ फोर्टीन परसेंट तो इसको प्लीज याद रखना अब तक लोगों को बस टेन परसेंट पता था बट विद रिसेंट अमेंडमेंट इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन टेन परसेंट से इसको फोर्टीन Now talking about the state government, central government के लिए mandatory है कि central government employees are required to have an NPS account. For the state government, except for West Bengal, West Bengal को छोड़ के जितने बाकी भी बाकी states हैं, they follow the footsteps of the central government. That is, cent, uh, the state government, except for the state of uh, West Bengal. and the state government employee will be contributing or contributing on a monthly basis to the nps account of of the employee i hope this is clear to you corporate model bilkul simple hai here also you can have or you can adopt the nps based on whatever agreement you have with your employer agar employer bolta hai theek hai we will be contributing then both of you can contribute simple now let's move forward and talk about other things and that is the choices under nps ab ye aapko help karegi jo bhi amendment aayi hai usko samajhne ke liye ab nps mein humne ye dekh liya ki there are two types of account tier 1 tier 2 tier 2 is voluntary and it is available only if you have an active tier 1 account ab jo choices hain now who makes investment so there are two choices under nps one is the active one the other is the auto Active is for the active investors. Naam se hi clear hai. If you have the financial knowledge and if you want to invest according to your own will, then you can make investment based on your own decision. So, आप ऐसे decide कर सकते हो. अब जैसे mutual funds होती है, portfolio create किया जाता है. Similarly, whatever amount you are contributing to NPS, for example, अगर आप दस हजार contribute कर रहे हो, this ten thousand will be diversified. ऐसा नहीं कि बस एक ही asset class में डाला जाएगा. This ten thousand will be diversified, and let's say five thousand will be kept in G S E, ताकि वो secure रहे. Then you can say one thousand in corporate debt. आपके debts में चले जाएंगे, bonds में चले जाएंगे, corporate bonds जो होते हैं. and 3000 in equity 
सो दैट आपको हायर रिटर्न मिले सो विथ हायर रिस्क कम हायर रिटर्न विथ हायर रिटर्न कम्स हायर रिस्क राइट सो अगर आप जितना ज्यादा इक्विटी में डालोगे उतना ज्यादा रिटर्न आएगा बट उसके साथ रिस्क भी उतनी आएगी तो ये जो दस हजार अगर आप एनपीएस में कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करते हो वो ऐसे डाइवर्सिफाई कर दिया जाएगा तो टेन प्लस वन प्लस फाइव सिक्स प्लस थ्री नाइन एंड रिमेनिंग वन थाउजेंड लेट से यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन सम अदर फंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल रीट्स में आपने पैसे डाल दिए ठीक है या फिर कोई भी ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड में आपने पैसे डाल दिए तो सी में डाल दिए तो ये आपका ऐसे डाइवर्सिफाई करके इन्वेस्टमेंट किया जाएगा एंड वॉट एवर रिटर्न यू अर्न फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ दीज विल बी एक्यूमुलेटेड एंड विल बी गिवन टू यू ऑन योर एन पी एस अकाउंट आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू नाउ तो ऐसे डाइवर्सिफिकेशन होता है अब कितना परसेंट किस एसेट क्लास में डालना है दैट विल डिपेंड ऑपन द इन्वेस्टर द सब्सक्राइबर सो अंडर द एक्टिव Active mode, the subscriber can decide how much percentage does the person wants to have its money into the different asset classes. Government securities में कितना डालना है, equity में कितना डालना है, bonds में कितने डालने हैं, other asset classes में कितने डालने हैं. That leverage or that uh, facility is provided to the subscriber. However, अब ऐसा नहीं कि you can put entire hundred percent of your investment इन लेट से अदर एसेट ऐसा नहीं होगा देर इज अ लिमिट लिमिट के बारे में अभी बात करेंगे बट लिमिट दिया हुआ है फॉर इंस्टेंस अगर आप अदर एसेट्स में करते हो देन ओनली फाइव परसेंट ऑफ योर मैक्सिम इन्वेस्टमेंट कैन बी डन देर क्यों वहां पर रिस्क बहुत ही ज्यादा हाई है और अनसर्टेन भी है राइट सो दिस इज क्लियर टू यू ऑटो क्या है ऑपोजिट वॉलेंट्री सो दिस इज फॉर दी पैसिव इन्वेस्टर्स हु डो नॉट हैव मच ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल नॉलेज तो यहाँ पे वट डज दी फंड होल्डर डू द फंड मैनेजर सो द फंड मैनेजर फंड मैनेजर वर्क ऑन अ लाइफ स्टाइल लाइफ साइकिल बेस्ड अप्रोच वॉट इज दिस लाइफ साइकिल बेस्ड अप्रोच सो एज एन एज एन वेन यू ग्रो ओल्ड आप बहुत ज्यादा सेफर इन्वेस्टमेंट में इन्वेस्ट करना शुरू कर देते हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल नाउ यू आर एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव आप बहुत यंग हो यू कैन टेक मच मोर रिस्क सो वट डज your fund manager will do your fund manager will be investing more, most of your investment into the equity asset class so equity mein maximum investment kiya jayega when you are young because it is said that you can take much more of the risk for example from the age of 25 you age to 40 at that time you you do not want to take much of the risk and you do not want to play much safe so you will be in the moderate phase so when you were 25 you were into the aggressive phase and the maximum that you can make investment into the equity will be 75% once you age once you are in the mid age for example 40 years of age at that time the maximum investment that you can do into the equity will be 50% and once you reach near the retirement age that is agar aap uh, 50 and above ho gaye 51 52 at that time the maximum investment that you can do in the equity will be 25% and that stage of the life cycle approach will be known as conservative the life cycle approach teen basic isme life cycles hain the first is the aggressive phase the second the moderate phase and third is the conservative phase aur in teeno mein maximum equity investment kitni ho sakti hai that has been given out here अब इसका बेनिफिट क्या है नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस योर एसेट्स आर डाइवर्सिफाइड एंड एट द सेम टाइम यू आर गेटिंग मच बेटर और ऑप्टिमल रिटर्न अगर आप बस सेफ खेलते सारा पैसा गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज में डालते यू 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 वुड हैव अर्न अ वेरी लेस रिटर्न एज कंपेयर टू व्हाट अदर्स कुड हैव अर्न इफ इन्वेस्टेड इन इक्विटी बट सिंस यू हैव मेंटेनड अ बैलेंस इन योर इनिशियल इयर्स यू हैव यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड मोर ऑफ योर मनी इनटू द इक्विटी यू हैव Uh, you have tried to get a optimal return out of the entire investment during the span of your life apart from that during as you aged you have invested more of your securities into the safer assets for example government securities there you have tried to create a cushion so that your money is safe in times of any kind of volatility into the market to so, dono aapko benefit mil jata hai using the life cycle based approach so this is for those who do not have much of the financial knowledge or wo chahte hain ki koi fund manager on behalf of them make investment into different assets classes for the nps investments
आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू आपको समझ आ गया होगा नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक अबाउट दी रेगुलेशन तो जो चेंजेस आए हैं वो चेंजेस ये हैं अब इस चेंजेस को समझने के लिए पहले समझते हैं कि क्या रेगुलेशन है इक्विटी की कितना परसेंटेज आप इक्विटी में इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हो सो दिस इज द टेबल सो अंडर एन पी एस ऑल सिटीजन मॉडल अब मैंने आपको ऑल सिटीजन मॉडल एक्सप्लेन किया था वेर बाय Any person between the age group of 18 to 65 can invest in NPS on a voluntary basis. So, for all the all citizen model, NPS subscriber had the option to choose any of the registered uh, fund or जो भी investment होगा that will go and into this four asset classes. So, ये आपके four assets classes हैं. Asset class G, that is for government securities, where you can invest a maximum of hundred percent of your investment. For example, आपके पास दस हजार monthly NPS आपको invest करना है. If you want to invest all, then you can do so in case of government securities. Entire ten thousand can be invested. The second is corporate bonds. Since corporate bonds में भी एक fixed interest payment मिलती है. Here also you can make a maximum of hundred percent of your entire investment. Third is asset class equity. Since equity consists of risk, the maximum investment allowed under the NPS is seventy five percent. Seventy five percent of your total investment. That is, here from seventy five hundred maximum, you can invest in equity in equity. Me invest kar and for alternate assets asset class a alternate assets the maximum that you can invest is 5% just 5% you can invest in alternate assets alternate assets jaise alternative investment funds ho gaye private equity hedge funds all of these jitne bhi assets hain usme aap bas 5% kar sakte ho i hope this is clear to you 5% kitna hoga aapka 500 rupees ke aas paas right so this is the asset classes और इसके basis पे ही investment किया जाता है total आपका हंड्रेड परसेंट आना चाहिए टोटल पैसा मिला के टेन थाउजेंड ही आएगा राइट सो दिस इज द एसेट क्लास एंड द मैक्सिम लिमिट जिसमें आप इन्वेस्टमेंट कर सकते हो अब जाते हैं दूसरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग पे नाउ जस्ट अ सेकेंड गाइज यस Yes. So now this is the PFRDA new regulation, whereby it says that according to the new regulation, the private sector subscribers, so jitne bhi private sector subscribers hai, they can allocate up to seventy five percent of their funds to equity under active choice. So jo active choice hai, where you decide how much of your investment you want to keep in what type of asset. That under that category, a maximum of seventy-five percent allocation was allowed to the equity asset. Equity में आप seventy-five percent कर सकते थे. Earlier क्या था? Before this new regulation, there was a tapering requirement. तो एक tapering requirement होती थी. What is this tapering requirement? So according to this tapering requirement, once you age fifty-one, जैसे ही आपने fifty years cross किए, once you are of the age fifty-one. You need to reduce your investment in equity at the rate of 2.5 percent annually. जैसे आप 51 years के हुए, आपका जो investment होगा वो कितना हो जाएगा? कितना हो जाएगा? 72.5. And this is much clear from here. So this is the table which says that once you have attained the age of 51. The seventy-five percent cap, जो equity में आपने देखा था, that will go on reducing. There will be a tapering of two point five percent annually. तो जब fifty years के होंगे, fifty years तक, what is the maximum allocation to the equity? You can do up to seventy-five percent, जो हमने asset classification देखा था. Once you are of the age fifty-one, आपका two point five percent कम हो जाएगा. That will go to seventy-two point five. अगर आप 52 इयर्स के होगे आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट इक्विटी में और कम हो जाएगा एंड दैट विल बी अराउंड 70 सिमिलरली 67.5 2.5 परसेंट एनुअली कार आपका इक्विटी में इन्वेस्टमेंट कम कर दिया जाएगा बट नाउ विद द न्यू रेगुलेशन न्यू रेगुलेशन क्या बोल रही है द न्यू रेगुलेशन सेज 
that this tapering requirement is no more required. That is the maximum investment that you can do into the equity is up to 75% only without any kind of tapering requirement. If you are 51 years, ke ho gai, 52 years, ke ho gai, still you can allocate or you can make investment into the equity up to 75% of, of your total contribution to the NPS. And secondly, it says that it has been decided to allow the option to allocate 100% of the contribution in asset class equity E in tier 2 optional account. So, which was tier 2 account, tha, that was meant for investment purposes, right? If you want to invest in equity, mein karna ho, that you can do so up to 100%. Retirement purpose, ke liye safe khelna hai, maximum 75%. What was the first thing? tapering requirement thi har saal 2.5% se investment in equity was reduced if you are more than 50 years of age. Now this tapering requirement has been done away with. Ab aapko bas 75% maximum investment milega equity mein invest karne ke liye. Secondly, agar aap tier 2, if you have, if you are having an active tier 1 account, then you can have a tier 2 account. In this tier 2 account, you can have a maximum of 100% of your investment in equity. For example, tier 2 investment purpose ke liye aapne 1000 rupees allocate kiye hai. Ki aap invest karoge monthly in tier 2 account of NPS. Now, entire 1000 can be invested in equity. Agar hum tier 1 account ki baat kare, to bus 750 allowed tha, 75%. But tier 2 ke andar 100% allowed hai. And there is no condition of tapering. Kuch tapering ya cut nahi hoga aapki investment mein. I hope this is clear to you. If we talk about the applicability, to jo tier 1 ke liye aya hai, this 75%, this is for the private sector subscribers ki tapering unke liye nahi hogi. And the tier 2, that is 100% investment in equity is for all the subscribers. So, jitne bhi subscribers hai, for all of them, if you want to make investment using your tier 2 account, then you can have all of your investment into the equity. 100% aap equity mein kar sakte ho. And this is now how it is going to look like. So, ye ab table ban ke aa gaya. Private sectors ke liye, government securities, corporate bonds, hamesha se 100% thi. Equity, 75% is the maximum limit. Ab tapering requirement yahaan pe zarurat nahi hai. Asset class ka 5% hai. Similarly, if we talk about tier 2 account, tier 2 account mein government securities and corporate bonds 100% tha. Asset class alternate assets aapka 5% hai. This equity for investment purpose will now be available to at the rate of 100%. That is all of your money you can put in equity and you can play very aggressive if you are sure of the return and if you are ready to take that risk. Theek hai? So I hope you have understood the entire thing. Ek bar dobara dekho. Thoda sa confusing hai. It's, but it is very easy to understand. And let's move forward to the questions. So the first question for you says, what is the amount of monthly contribution for NPS to be done by the central government under the government model? Very simple. Abhi humne discuss kiya tha. The second question says, what is the maximum limit of investment that can be done in the asset class E. Now, what is asset class E? That you all should know. A ka kya matlab tha? Alternate assets. E ka tha? Equity. Aise aapko yaad rakhna padega under the NPS all citizen model. Investment kitna kar sakte ho equity mein? Again, very simple. We have talked about it many times. And the third question says, you need to identify the correct statements. Teen statements hai, you need to identify the correct one. The first says the active model under NPS is based on the life cycle based approach. That you need to clarify whether it is the active mode or the auto mode. Second, under the life cycle approach, the maximum investment in equity under the moderate phase is 25%. This also we have talked about. And third, the auto mode allows subscribers to decide the asset class allocation on their own. Is that the auto class? or the active class that you need to decide and find out the correct statements. Moving forward to the last question for today, which says we need to identify the 
incorrect statements. So the first statement says in tier 2 account of NPS, which is the voluntary one, only private subscribers can have investment in equity up to 100%. Applicability we had learned, we will know from Second, in tier 1 account of NPS, private subscribers can allocate up to 75% of their funds to equity with tapering requirement. This you need to talk about. And third, maximum limit of investment that a subscriber can allocate to government securities for the purpose of NPS is 100%. You need to identify the incorrect statements. Answers are provided to you. In case of any doubt, you can ask in the comment section or over the discussion forum. This was all for today. I hope you liked the session and keep learning. Till then, take care and bye-bye.